The Little Mermaid. Since the original story was written by Hans Christian Andersen, and there have been many different takes on it, from the heroine who met a tragic fate in the original fairy tale to a lovable, eccentric 1989 Disney animated film, there will likely be many more interpretations to come. So, rather than and getting the discourse from live action version, believe me, there'll be another time for that. Now we'll take a look at favorite version story. So, let's open up the Hayao Miyazaki film Ponyo on its 50th anniversary of its Japanese release. We open on the ocean. We're introduced to our title character and glorious array of undersea creatures. So many examples of traditional animation that is utterly beautiful. The studio actually closed their CG division ahead of release to show the commitment. Only really fairly recently began experimenting with it again. Her name is actually Brunhilde at the start. But when Fort Talco comes up, we see her catching a ride on the Dome of Jellyfish, which both on the poster and the cover of the home release. The beginning is labeled as a credits roll with Joe Hizashi's score and the Hayashi Mihai Masako song Mother Sea overlay on a great watercolor sequence. The main story takes place in a small seaside village, and our lead is caught in a scarred jar near the home of Sosuke, voiced by Frankie Jonas, and his mother Lisa, voiced by Tina Fey. Before he's taken to school, he frees her from the jar, cutting his finger in the process. The goldfish heals the cut with a lick. Remember her tasting blood. It'll be important later. See him getting a taste of ham. I think a lot of us prefer prosciutto over plankton. Mm. Her father, Fujimoto, voiced by Liam Neeson, is looking for her, and in both appearance and personality, it's very different from most versions of the story. He appears and acts more like an eccentric rock singer than the King of the Sea. Case in point. Hint, Lisa calls him a spraying weed killer, which he clarifies actually pure seawater. Hmm. Holding the fish in his bucket, Sosuke names her Ponyo, and Lisa drives him to school before she goes to work at the nursing home. As for her driving, well, it was the late 2000s. Riots just weren't really a thing yet. I will note, I just love how expressive the characters are, both human and underwater alike. I always enjoyed the, how the Sydney is key to the story, especially with the placement of the rest home, with the school, and his home. I also interested to the seniors, Kayo, Yoshi, and Toki, respectively voiced by the late Tomlin, the late Betty White, and the late Close Leachman. As for Toki's omen about tsunamis, let's just say the hits differently nowadays, for a number of reasons. Sosuke hides Ponyo in the bush during class, and though his classmates seem nice, Ponyo isn't too open to them. Kayo and Yoshi seem kind towards Ponyo, but Toki sees the fish in Omen. Sporting cast also has seasoned voice actors and actresses such as Bob Bergen, Mona Marshall, and Colleen Villard. Ponyo herself speaks, and she works with Noah Cyrus. So, we have Miley's younger sister and the youngest Jonas brother as our leads. Fujimoto brings Ponyo home, much of the stress of Sosuke and Lisa. Placed inside a bubble, the two who kids are brought home, and after Lisa stops at Tutomo. I know the roads and the mountains do take some navigation skill, but just remind me not to carpool with her. Hmm. Coming home, Sosuke leaves his bucket on the fence post so she know where to find him. As Lisa makes dinner, she gets a call from her husband Koichi, which is Matt Damon, who won't be coming ashore as he initially hoped. I know it's coming, I have a bit prepared. I will stay for now with no cuts policy. If I got a call like that, I'd want a can of sake too. Now, we come to the scene with the light signals. This is a very touching scene, especially as it doubles an apology from Miyazaki to his own family. Kaluta and Sosuke wishing Koichi luck, Koichi thanking him, and Sosuke hugging Lisa. Not just the movie. It's been a tense few years. I need a moment. Back with Fujimoto, he's not pleased with her bonding with humans, eating their food, tasting their blood, falling in love with children, growing arms and legs. The squash and stretch her transformations and Fujimoto casting a binding spell is great. Picture the bouncing ball test, imagine that becoming a goldfish kid. Though it seems to spell a word as she sleeps, her sister's collectively voiced by senior actress as Yano Akiko hatch a plan to get her back to Sosuke, using her and their father's elixirs in the room marked Pangea, Pony's transformation completes as she heads to the surface with magic of her own. 
The music swirls, and his sisters grow into massive fish, become the waves themselves. Guichi spots Ponyo in the water and remarks that she looks about Sosuke's age. At the same time, Lisa to get him back home, figuratively and literally riding out of the storm. She certainly got the touch, shortly running into Stallone and Alternus Prime going the other way. Sitting off from the rest home, it's quite an impressive driving sequence. I like the touch of Sosuke making the greenish paper bows as a parting gift. Feel free to insert running in the 90s if you want. I know it will be in my head. Sosuke sees Ponyo running on the waves, and just as planned, the bucket helps her find her way back to his home. Bonnie over dinner, and a newfound hands and feet. It's a great scene. As for this, I'm going to go back to the senior center. I get why Coach Leach has to leave, leave them I'm there, but even I can't help but feel for the kids. I knew who won back in 97 who had to watch the house like that, and he introduced me to Goldeneye as well. Elsewhere, Fujimoto sees the queen, mother of their children, Grandma Mare, voiced by Kate Blanchett. That's how they made it given the size difference. Well, I get the feeling magic was involved. They will later play versions of Zeus and Hela after all. Nissan can also make a lot of things sound good, like side effects may include headache, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Well, Morgan Freeman and David Attenborough, he's definitely going to narrate my life if it became possible. Grandma Mare poses a test of Sosuke and Ponyo's character. If successful, Ponyo will become fully human. The moon has also gotten close to Earth, wreaking havoc on the tides. No doubt it also caused a ruckus with the water bends in Uzaru. Looks like the little details of Ponyo and Sosuke appearing in the water and how Ponyo's outfit and hair came naturally from her transformation. Using her magic, Sosuke's boat is made seaworthy. And the two set out to finally set the rest home, grabbing the surprise left by Lisa and his captain's hat. They're off with Ponyo's lookout. The cliffside and trees are now waterways full of ancient fish, and Ponyo also has a sick child with her magic. Previously stated, this sequence definitely takes a new meaning after the initial release, especially at 2011. That said, there's an outpouring of more optimistic and hopeful stories and anecdotes around and after that time, and this is no exception. He just land, and Sosuke feels the worst as he finds Lisa's car on the road and Ponyo starts to feel tired. They reach a rest home while most of the seniors and Lisa were safely extracted, Toki stayed behind. Fujimoto also resurfaces and thinking that they collide in a big splash. Thankfully, everyone is alright, and as Sosuke reunites with his parents and the others, Ponyo has passed the test of character. Fujimoto wishes her and Sosuke well, and while lots of stuff Got sent to VOD after that infamous interview of his. Did like seeing him as Qui Gon Jin again in the Obi Wan event series. The film closed on Ponyo becoming human, giving Sosuke a kiss, and a very memorable final image. Reason why I chose it as the thumbnail. Also, a very good closing song from our leads, and even the dance mix. Good to wrap up as any. The film was acclaimed by critics and audiences alike, and I openly admit to enjoying it. Made two hundred four million dollars worldwide on a thirty-four million dollar budget and one hundred sixty-four million, which came from its native Japan alone. Mains my favorite version of Little Mermaid to this day, and I'm glad to have shared it with you all. My final rating is four out of four. I have much planned for this summer, and I will see you all again soon. Take care, everyone. Hmm.